Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a bit of a weird one this, morning, this afternoon. So we've got um, Sean Walsh, who thinks that he can outrun a police dog. So just to prove him wrong, we thought we'd bring him out into the arena first off. So we've dressed him up, um, and we're going to see if he wants to take on a police dog. So do you want to take on the police dog? Uh, Jack D wants me to take on a police dog. Jack D wants him to play, take on a police dog. So what we'll do is we're going to bring uh, Lightning into the arena, and we're going to see if he's genuinely brave enough to take on one of our police dogs. So we're going to send him initially just for a bite, so he can feel what that feels like. This is genuinely the first time that he has felt a dog bite. <laughs> okay, so that's what a normal bite feels like. You still want to run for a police dog? <laughs> okay, I'm going to move out of the way. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's PD Lightning with PC Lisa Phillips and Sean Walsh who is a little bit crazy, let's be honest. We'll get him up. We're going to roll our VT and then we'll start our demonstration. just a flavour of what the police dogs can do. Good afternoon. So I'm Inspector Leanne Chapman from West Midlands Police's Dog Unit. Uh, welcome to our demonstration. I must stress to you that all of the dogs that you see here today are operational police dogs or dogs that are going through our puppy programme. All of the handlers that you see are operational police officers that have given up their free time in order to show you how fantastic our police dogs are. So what we're going to do today is take you through the journey of a police dog. So right from when they are a puppy, all the way through to uh, the end of their careers. So we'll, uh, we'll kick whoop, it off. Whoop. That's the sound of the police. Whoop, whoop. That's the sound of the beast. Whoop, whoop. That's the sound of the police. Whoop, whoop. That's the yes. sound of the beast. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got PD, Puppy Vixen and PD Stark. So PD Stark is one of our firearm support dogs and PD Vixen is one of the puppies in our puppy development program. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for them. So like I say, all of the uh, dogs that you see here today going through our puppy program. So these ones that you see into the arena now are around six months old. So our world-renowned breeding program um, supports all different police forces and all government organisations across the UK. They're absolutely fantastic and they all come through our breeding program that is Kennel Club Assured. As you can see, the puppies, what we'll do is get them focused on the decoy. When we get the behaviour that we want, we give them a nice toy as a reward. What we want to see is them fix that nice fixed grip. As they get older, we'll develop the different bite tugs that we use. So here now we've got the pillows, we'll get them targeted. As soon as we're happy with what they've done, we give them that reward. Everything that we do with our police dogs is all around play. It's to make sure that they are really happy with doing what they're doing. So if they're not comfortable, then they're not suitable to be a police dog because they have to absolutely love what they're doing, which is why all of what we do is reward-based. So then they're going to win that pillow, and then we're going to move it on now to one of the sleeves. Oh, he wants the pillow. <laughs> there we go. Look how happy he is. <laughs> and another one. <laughs> Never work with kids or animals. Um, so these are some of our dogs that are just going through the puppy development program. 
Uh, moving on then, we've got our initial course. So our initial course takes them from a puppy all the way through then to when they're an operational dog. So it's a 12 week course. I'm going to show you a little bit of agility. So into the arena, we've got PD Norbert. There you see that even a car is nowhere, nothing that we our dogs can't take on. So a little bit of agility for you. Lots of play, lots and lots of reward. We don't want the dogs to release until the handler tells them to do so. So that's Norbert with PC Foster. Next, we're going to do what we call a hold and bar. So when our dogs go out and they're operational, if they find somebody that's not moving, our dogs will do what we call a bark indication to alert the handler that they're there. But if the threat then changes, they will engage with the, uh, with the criminal. So what we'll show you now is a hold and bark. And then as soon as they give us the behaviour that we want, we give them a toy. As you'll see, this is just building on from when they are puppies, so it's just a progression all the way through. These dogs are, like say, are six weeks into an initial course, so in six weeks, they'll be operational police dogs. Little straight chase. Lots of play, lots of reward. And then building up now onto a sleeve and another straight chase. There we go, there's Nero. And a release back to the handler. So like I say, these are on their initial course, but what, we would do, what we're trying to do is build the foundations to make them into absolutely fantastic police dogs that can take on anything, such as a crowd like this. We're going to need some support from our operational support unit. So our folks work alongside all the different uh, specialisms within West Midlands Police. Here's our operational support unit. I'm sure they'll be able to deal with this crowd. It doesn't look like they can actually deal with this crowd. I think they're going to need some support from the dog unit. Attention, attention. This is a police warning. Disperse immediately or police dogs may be used. Attention, attention. This is a police warning. Disperse immediately or police dogs may be used. Not only do we expect our police dogs to be able to deal with uh, disorders such as that, we also expect them to, be, to have utmost control and to do what the handler asks them to do. So we're going to go into a little bit of a demonstration to show you um, some control exercises that we would expect our dogs to do. So into the arena, we've got PD Zaf with PC Mark Collier. They've only been operational together for two weeks. In that two weeks, that dog has already detained somebody for an attempt rape and he's gone to court where he's been remanded in custody. This team are fantastic. So, like I say earlier, it was just a hold and bark into a control position. He's going to do the same exercise again, but the decoy is going to then offer a bit of threat, and the dog is going to engage in a bite. And a release back to the handler. Doesn't matter if the criminals are standing up or sitting down, doesn't matter to our police dogs, they'll do the same. So same exercise again, hold and bark. Yeah. 
See the pressure he's putting on him, barking straight into his face. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, PD Zaf. Just to show you the difference, we've also got PD Stark. So PD Stark has been an operational police dog now for five years. He's absolutely fantastic. He's one of our firearm support dogs. I'm just going to show you the difference between the two, which, as you will see, is not that different. So we're going to send this dog in for a, a hold and bark. Back down to a control position. And now we're going to send Stark in. Stark's going to take a bite. Holding on nice, firm bites. And a release back for his ball. So now what we're going to do is leave him in a control position while the handler goes over to the criminal. He'll be able to touch him, be able to search him, and then return back to the dog. This is really, really hard for our dogs. They love that suit. That suit means that it's playtime. Even though they've swapped over, the commands will still be given by the handler. And there he is, in for a hold and bark. Come back to the handler. Dogs nice and controlled, even when the decoy is really close to them. Handlers are going to move off the dogs. And a recall back to their handlers. Ladies and gentlemen, PD Stark and PD Zaff. OK, let's get back into a little bit of excitement then. So I think we've got some naughty people coming back into the arena. He looks a bit shady, doesn't he? I wouldn't want to meet him on a dark night. They all just look a little bit shady, don't they? Dishing some naughty stuff out over in the corner. Oh, I think there's some other people coming into the arena now. I don't think they look very happy in this, uh, in this car. Ladies and gentlemen, PD Biff. Back to the handler for his toy. So what has just happened is we've simulated a stabbing. So what we need now is to find the evidence to convict that person of that crime. So we've got a newly trained victim recovery dog. So they're trained to locate um, dead people, blood, and parts of body, so such as teeth. So what they will do is they will search an area, and then they will give a freeze indication if they find something. 
There's a camera in the car, it's fine, don't worry, don't worry. Um, <laughs> the handler's heart just got into his mouth. Um, so, <laughs> so once they find what they're looking for, they'll give a nice freeze indication. So within West Midlands Police, we've got our newly trained victim recovery dogs. They've already been instrumental in convicting somebody of a murder. So we had a uh, murder where some, uh, somebody was hurt with a weapon that had then been hidden in a shed. As you can imagine, there's lots and lots of things that could be a weapon in a shed. The dog has gone in and indicated on a hammer that had been completely wiped clean. That hammer was sent off for forensics and came back with the victim's blood on it, ensuring a conviction. They are absolutely fantastic and they've already proved their worth. Not only do we have our VRD dogs, we've also got drugs, cash and firearms. We've also got our data dogs that can locate SIM cards. Uh, and we've got, um, I can't remember the other one, our explosive search dogs. So what you'll see there is once the dog has located what they're looking for, nice freeze indication, and then the dog will be given a reward. What the dog has indicated on there is a tooth. Ladies and gentlemen, PD Lula and PD Eccles. Okay, I don't know what's going on there. Petey Buzz, ladies and gentlemen. This job's just taken a turn for the worse, though. I think we're going to need some support from our firearms colleagues. criminal is not complying with the instructions of our firearms colleagues, so we'll send the dog in to detain that criminal, drag her out of that car, and bring her back behind the firearms officers, ensuring that everybody is safe. Ladies and gentlemen, our dogs deploy with our firearms colleagues on every single firearms incident across the West Midlands as a less lethal option so that we don't need to use the deadliest force of our firearms officers. We have got something a little bit special now. So we have taken you on the journey of our police dogs from a puppy all the way through to them being operational. But two of the dogs that have been in the arena tonight are actually retiring at the end of this month. So we're going to bring back into the arena PD Hands and PD Gooder. Let's just see a few uh, videos of them in action. for seven years. They have literally taken down hundreds of criminals across the West Midlands. They are absolutely fantastic. Both firearm support dogs, both amazing. Let's give them some of their final bites in the arena here tonight. I, I feel like we have actually let you down though because we haven't bought into the arena, Mr. Angry. So let's get him into the arena. Let's hear it from Mr. Angry, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get both dogs to take him out at the same time. Hans doesn't want to hang up his harness just yet, look. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, PD Gunner and PD Hans, they are genuinely fantastic police dogs. We've been so lucky to have them with us here in the West Midlands. 
Like I say, all of the people that you've seen here today have been operational dogs and handlers. I hope you have enjoyed our demonstration. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day.